So I just got done watching Secret Invasion Episode 5, and this is, of course, my spoiler review. Hi, my name is Zach. Thank you so much for clicking on this. I'm one of those crazy people that stays up past midnight to watch these episodes. And last week, I was not a big fan. Uh, it actually started to deter me from liking this show. Not because it was a bad episode, but because... It really just kind of started to just feel lackluster like the pacing felt off and some of the instances of just me really not giving a shit about what was going on and the fact that they killed Talos in such a very iffy way so going into this episode they had to do a lot of groundwork to get me excited for the finale as well as cover a lot of questions what I will give credit is that this episode is better than the last two still not as good as the first two I still like those the most but alongside this this episode did a few things for me. It didn't lay out more questions. It answered questions that I needed answered. It didn't just give me all these moments and exposition that I didn't need. It literally gave, again, good answers to questions that we had through the whole series. And if it gave more questions, it answered those immediately. So thank you for doing that because now I actually am a little bit more on board and excited for next week's finale. Alongside that, there's a lot more thoughts to this, so make sure to hit that like and subscribe button if you're new here, as well as leave your thoughts down below. Are you excited for the show? Or are you just over it? Are you not? As well as make sure, again, I'm going to be going to Comic-Con this week. There might be some cool things. There might not be because of all the strikes, but we all are still supporting the writers and the actors over here. So thank you so much for clicking on this video. These episode reviews are kind of sporadic and very much all over the place, so I'm pretty much just going to go character by character and discuss them one by one. Flat out, let's get Gaia out of the way, who teamed up with Nick Fury's wife this week as she went to bury her father, Talos, who did end up sadly passing away, which sucks because Ben Mendelsohn is incredible. I will give credit where credit is due. This show isn't doing all the fake out deaths like I thought it was going to be. They killed Talos. They killed Maria Hill. They're doing what they're going to do, even if I don't agree fully on it. And I'll give credit. It does give some emphasis to some certain deaths. And the sequence of her burying her father was actually quite emotional i was really all about that and i think amelia clark does a really good job in the role but i think where it really gets down to is when she has that great conversation with nick fury's wife and where it really comes down to and how you kind of understand why these two did fall for one another which i also think is a great parallel to nick fury and finding out why he cares so much about the scroll compound and in general the scrolls themselves and why he feels for them he felt like an outsider of some sorts and specifically we see how his relationship with his wife had built up to that importance since of it all that is not even a word but it's important so again i'm really tired reviewing this and i'm sure if you're watching this you're probably also tired too if you're staying up past late but the thing that I actually really dug was the action sequence in here. There's two major action sequences. That one, and specifically the one with Gravit killing like a ton of different scrolls. It was badass. It was terrible. But Ben Kingsley is doing an amazing job in there. We'll get back to him in a second. That whole sequence kind of just reminded me of John Wick type action. I wish they would have held the camera a little bit more than just cutting around. But it was still fun. And this show still gets me excited to see what they're going to be able to do with Daredevil. Punisher eventually since we know John Berthnall is coming back there's rumors that he's getting his own show I don't know how the quality of the stories will be told but at least I know that they can tell a mature rating with along that and I've never said that Daredevil needed to be rated R Punisher definitely should be rated R but for me seeing the blood seeing the f like just the graphicness I guess of this MCU show it's nice and it gives me a little bit more hope for Daredevil and Punisher for what they're able to do with that but that sequence was great Jumping over to Gravik, who ended up taking out a lot of his men's, really flip-flopping what he's going to do, working with the roadie scroll, all sorts of things like that. Gravik just wants this thing called the Harvest. That's all he cares for, and you know he makes a deal with Nick Fury saying, you're either going to do this or I'm going to blow up my entire compound, which we see, of course, Nick Fury deal with the scroll roadie earlier on, and he sees that he's really much just on his own until he teams up with Gaia, who we know will probably come back in the very last episode. We know his wife will probably do the same to a certain extent. Maybe I'm wrong on that, but we know Gaia is going to team up, and of course, Olivia Coleman's character as well, which... It's great to see her back because Olivia Coleman is amazing and chemistry wise with Nick Fury, it was fantastic. What I will say here though with Olivia Coleman's character is her missing out on the last episode, I do think kind of hurt her choice to start helping Fury in this one. I understand why it started going towards that, but that's the one element that did feel a tad rushed. Wanted a little bit more in there personally. 
but seeing their conversation when he gets into the car was nice. I like that. I like seeing them bond a bit and her starting to understand who Fury is. And even seeing again when they show up to that fake tombstone, he says, you know, this is where me and Priscilla came because scrolls like the cold and she understood right there. But I'm not also going to lie that it was pretty badass to see Nick Fury putting on the eye patch again, putting on the coat and just storming out there ready to finish this all up, which we will see next week in the finale. But leading into there, the thing that I was actually most surprised to see was the answer to why Nick Fury returned, why he's not calling any superhero friends. Is it more of just a line to kind of just why we're all asking the same question? Yeah, a little bit. And I'm hoping that next week kind of gives a little bit more emphasis to the relationship between Gravik and Nick Fury. I think that's the one thing that's kind of been missing. It's been alluded to throughout this entire show, but it's never been actually seen. And I think next week, at least I'm hoping, is we get a little bit more of that for me to look back and be like, oh, okay, I get this. Still doesn't deter that I think they should have done it through part of the show, at least in flashbacks, since they did so many flashbacks throughout this. But that is one thing to kind of look forward to. And last but not least, to kind of talk and round out this review is really much just some of the Easter eggs. It was cool to see the little kind of Widow technology that Fury used to get through all the, the kind of customs. But also we got to see our guy Mason from Black Widow. That was a cool cameo. Honestly, not really. I, I didn't really care for it. I was just like, oh, he's in this. I don't really know what they're doing with this show. I like this show. I just, there's a lot to it that I wish was a lot better. And this episode, while again, did get me back on board for most of it. I'm kind of like, okay, I'm intrigued. Show me the finale. I'm happy I don't have a lot of questions. I'm hoping next week doesn't give me a bunch of questions to start answering. I'm hoping it ends co cohesively and then gives me into the next you know, Captain Marvel 2 or the Marvels or whatever it's called. So that's where I'm kind of at. I, I like this episode. It was better than last week's. I think it was even better than episode three. And I think it was a nice little start to the finale. But with only one episode left, I can't get this feeling of I'm a little bit disappointed with the entire show overall. I did still really love the first two, but the rest of it's kind of just kind of teetered off. But other than that, guys, let me know down below what your guys' thoughts are. Again, I am absolutely exhausted. Um, I'm sure you can absolutely tell. I have an Oppenheimer review coming out as well Wednesday. As you're watching this, it's probably already up if you're not crazy and stayed up till past midnight. But, of course, until next time, guys, stay classy.